offense and defensively about 170 snaps today. I thought our energy and our urgency and our focus was, was really good. We still have way too many self-inflicted issues as far as procedure and you know some silly penalties, you know, some pass interference. You know, we didn't need to have contact. And, uh, but I saw more competitive plays today as far as a guy making a play with contested coverage, a guy making a run when there wasn't a lot there, uh, a guy rushing the passer when it was protected well. I don't know what kind of weather dance we've been doing, but we didn't get the heat we need. I can assure you of that. That is a huge concern of mine, and I hope uh, we're going to go Monday and Tuesday afternoon. Hopefully we'll get some heat. we got some live uh, punt and punt block, uh, which was good for us. we got two live kickoffs, which is good evaluation, especially for our young players. And you know, this was a really good move the ball day. We got down in the red zone, uh, two different periods, and the offense was really successful. The first one, the defense on the next one. So there was some give and take uh, in the scrimmage. But uh, I thought, again, we moved the ball well offensively, especially with our first group. Uh, really pleased with, with that production and, and where we are there. We just need to tie up. We want to look at a couple third down pressures defensively. They're really base concepts of what we already have built in. Uh, you know, some special team situational work that we need to go back and hit again. So all things that are certainly, you know, well cor correctable uh, that we can work on moving forward and, and, and things that really are base concepts of what we already have and just kind of adding on as we've gone through camp and seen some things we really like and that our players are comfortable with. Jim? Who, uh, who scored for you today? Any big plays? Um, you know, I'm just trying to, I think, you know, first drive offensively, it was a 15-play drive. We ended up scoring on a, on, a, on a fourth inside. We were first and goal on the four. I told Brian he had four downs. We scored on a fourth down play. Um, you know, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. We had some big plays, especially with you know with the younger groups. Uh, some some guys stepped up a little bit, but I'm not going to get into individual you know stuff. I know that the first play I thought was very impressive. We had a couple third downs that were highly contested defensively. They were really well thrown balls, really, you know, nice job catching the football in a 50-50 situation. Um, but they were all contested. There was a couple questionable whether the ball was going to get out or not. Uh, you know, the defensive guys all yell at me on that, but, uh, but I'll deal with that. So, um, but I was, you know, again, I was pleased with the, the effort our guys showed today. Well, do you like what you've seen out of the running game so far this camp? I have. I think that the RPOs that we've done before, but we're a little bit more into those now, uh, certainly have helped us. You know, create some matchup issues, especially with some of the guys we got outside. I mean, Brian and Debo and Shy and Mortray, those guys can all win in man coverage. You know, that's the key in our league. You know, you look at third down, third, third and six or less with the denying the ball down situations, you've got to be able to win. And if you're going to stop RPOs, you got to play some man coverage. Uh, zone coverage is very difficult to play. So, um, you know, you got to mix things up. You can't too much top chocolate cake will make you sick. But you got to mix things up a little bit there. And uh, certainly being being able to have those matchups is good for us. How does Javon mature? Not as a player, but as a young man. Um, you know, I think in life, sometimes a young man just needs an opportunity, needs somebody to believe in. And uh, the and first time I met Javon, I started talking to him about going to Jones Junior College. He didn't. He never met me in his life. I've never, never talked on the phone. I went down to Goose Creek High School. I didn't want to. I don't think that introduction over the phone is very good. You want to try and sit down eyeball to eyeball and talk to somebody about it. He he trusted us and, and what we were going to do as far as helping him get to Jones. And Steve Buckley and his staff did a fantastic job. Um, and when any any time Javon probably was a little reluctant to the idea at first, called me when he got there. Couldn't, you know, they didn't have any friends, didn't know any of the coaches. And, uh, and I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's an unbelievable story, really what it is. And a guy that ended up on the Dean's list there, uh, getting back here in May, showing up at 340 pounds, and totally dedicated himself to do the things he needed to do to, to get his body right. He's down to 300 pounds and playing at a high level. He ended the last season playing at a high level. So I've seen him, a guy mature tremendously. When he has his off time, he wants to go to Mississippi. You know, he made a lot of friends out there, which is awesome. So I, I just think it's one of the great stories about in college football. You look every day, the, the difference that you're able to make in a young man's life, um, and, and he's making a difference for himself. I mean, that's that's what who I would credit the most is a young man that's been through some tough situations and continue to fight and persevere, and, uh, and he's an example for us all.